welcome. So this is discussion on painting and we all know green is everywhere. And paint green in your paintings to tell a story, right? And how many shades of green and how do you go about it when you're outside? And Peggy has an amazing way she approaches it that um, I started doing it already because we had practiced a week ago and it just makes a huge difference. Mm. In your kit and approach. Yeah. Should I go ahead and start? Yes, I'll start. Can I, did you make me? Uh, yeah, I did. No. So you can okay. share, you see, you can share your screen down. Uh, on the bottom. Well, the way I mix green is similar to the way I mix other colors in terms of the process. And uh, all of, and it, my process is really based on uh, what I'd call a uh, color theory. And we debated, uh, Randy and I debated, should we talk to you about the theory first and then show you how to mix it? But we decided it was more fun if we showed you my palette and what I work with and how I mix. And then I'll tell you about the color theory that is the foundation for how I approach mixing paint. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, pipe right up. Yep. Uh, there aren't that many of you, or if you want, you can raise your hand or you can post in chat if you don't feel comfortable posting in and then I'll see it and I can at a moment break in, but feel free to also ask. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. And the first thing I want to show you is, wait a second here, my palette. And I opened it, but now I'm, it's all covered up by all the Zoom stuff. Oh, so you can see up on top, you can take and put, hit the space bar which would get rid of everybody. That's See? okay. I can I can uh, open it up this way. Okay. Okay. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to move this, I hope. Can everybody see that bar, which I'm struggling with? No. Oh, <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. So um, this is the palette of colors, the basic palette of color that I work with. Uh, and I'll start over on the, what is my right-hand side, sap green. I carry a green on my palette, and, and the idea is that I use that basic green and mix other colors in with it. I don't use it straight. I don't use the green out of the tube, but I like to start with the same green every time because then it's more predictable for me. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, you have sap green, and I use a warm and cool primary palette. Uh, so I have a warm and cool of each of the primaries. And in the blues, my warm is cerulean, because I live in the Southwest, and that's really good for the desert. And my cool blue is cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. And I like to have both of those on the palette. So I actually have three primaries in the blues. Uh, any, I think cobalt is the most, is the coolest of the three. Then in yellow, I use a uh, cad yellow medium for my warm yellow and cad yellow lemon for my cool yellow. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's skip cad orange. That's something else. And then I, for the reds, I use cad red medium and for my warm red and alizarin permanent for my cool red. Um, the, th the thing is, I think it's nice in the reds and the blues to have as dark, uh, Trans, a transparent and dark version of each of those pigments, it's really helpful because then you can make blacks and that it's good for making your darks. 
So then uh, to that primary palette, which doesn't really include sap green, I add convenience colors and sap green would be one of those convenience colors. And as I said, I start with the same green every time when I'm mixing greens, but I don't use that green per se to paint with straight. Then another nice convenience color is cadmium orange. And I really just love the color and I can't ever seem to mix it with even cad yellow lemon and alizarin. I just can't mix it. So I just carry a tube of it. And then I have three earth colors to modify those uh, primary colors. You could mix the earth colors, but the thing is it takes time and so I do a lot of plein air work typically, and it's easier if I just have those colors all ready and I can get them in a tube. You could mix them ahead of time, I guess. Um, it's really a speed issue. And then titanium white. So that's my palette. Is that, does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I said I don't use my green straight, what I do is I mix, let me see, get this up. I'm gonna reduce this down, make it smaller. <clears throat> I'll make this bigger. So I mix in string, what I call strings and I pay a lot of attention to the temperature of colors and the value of colors. So when I'm mixing and getting ready to paint, I will mix some darks for a given color. In this case, it's green. And I'll mix some lights for it. And then I'll mix a neutral middle ground color for it. And in each of those, in the darks and the lights, I like to mix a warm and a cool. And one of the reasons I like ultramarine and sap and transparent oxide red is because they're all transparent and they make great dark colors for shadows. <clears throat> and I'll show you some paintings at the end and tell we'll talk about where these were used. I don't know if you can uh, take a picture of these or write them down, but um, I guess it'll be up so you'll be able to photograph it. So to make the cool dark green, I mix ultramarine and sap, but you could use any cool dark color uh, to do that. And to make a warm dark green, I mix transparent oxide red and sap green, but you could use alizarin crimson, for example, instead of transparent oxide red. Or if you typically like to work with viridian, you could use viridian for your green, for your base green. And then I like to mix a neutral middle green. And in this case, I like to mix, um, sorry about that. In this case, I like to mix, I'm sorry, that's my phone. Let's see if I can turn it off there. I did not hear it, so you're good. Okay, uh, I like to mix uh, sap green with raw sienna. Raw sienna is a, kind of a cool, darker yellow ochre and it's kind of transparent and it's just a great color for the southwest and for deserts so i like that and that's my just my neutral middle green right there in the middle then my warm light green i use yellow ochre and sap green and then a cool light green i would mix cerulean and sap and in this case i added a little white to it because I wanted people to be able to see it, but normally I don't put any white in any of this. These are my base colors. And the other thing I wanna mention is that I haven't, uh, I haven't mixed them up thoroughly. They're not homogenous, there's variety in them. See that little bit of yellow in there? I think that's more exciting. So does anybody have any questions uh, about how this string mixing works? mix a, a warm and a cool of the lights and the darks. You could mix a warm and a cool, I guess, of what I like to think of as a local color, but it doesn't really seem necessary. Uh, and Peggy does this in the beginning, even before she's painting, so she'll pull from this, right, Peg? Yes. So 
I have a little video that will show you the mixing. And uh, for whatever reason, I'm not seeing people. I guess it's because I guess I stopped my share. <laughs> That's helpful. <laughs> so what I thought I would do is show you a video of how I how I would go about mixing. And if I were outside and I was painting a big green field, I'd mix this whole string up before I ever started. And then from this string, I would mix other colors. I would add to it. So let me just show you this video. Uh, so I need to share it, don't I? Hold on here. Bear with me, I'm kind of technologically challenged too. Uh, so. Um, if you go down to share, it'll show you which windows you have open. I can't seem to find it. So just bring Wait, your cursor. Oh, here, here. Let me just reduce these. Is this me? Here we go. There we go. Um, well, I'm going to share my screen. And so I just go ahead and click on the thing I want to share, don't I? Yes. Hit share and then click the window that you want to. That's okay. Share my screen. And I think it's this one. Can it can everyone see this? Yes. Uh -huh. I'm making it bigger so you can see it. Great. Okay. And hopefully, let's get rid of that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to come up here because it took me a while to get it. Here we go. A little cockeyed, but so I'm taking a sap green, which I didn't have enough of, and I am putting it on the palette in my five piles, mm. which would, for like for here, here would be my cool, I'm going to mix a cool green there, a warm dark. Well, you'll see. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is make, make the cool dark green. And I'm mixing ultramarine with the sap green. Not very thoroughly. It's fast. It's a fast way to do this. Then transparent oxide red. And then this is raw sienna that I'm using. I guess I could use the straight sap green for my local neutral middle color, but I just don't like to, I like to avoid doing that. So it looks like you're intentionally not keeping these um, mixes separate from one another. They're nope. running into one another, yes? Yes, this is the warm light green. And I can't tell you why I do it before the cool, just that I always have. Um, and sometimes I don't actually mix a cool, um, but it's a good policy in the beginning, I think, to do it. I'm putting some white in there so you can actually see it, but I normally wouldn't do that. So I probably shouldn't have done it, but because now it's too blue. So I'm gonna go in and put more green in it. This would be like for a gray day. Hmm. Now, if you had a gray, rainy day, you might want that. I'm using a little orange to pump up the, the warm light. Hmm. So now what I wanna do, I could use, one thing I didn't show in this that I probably should have is how I would take each of these little piles and further alter them for a painting. Uh, I thought what I would do is just take the cool, the warm, it take everything and mix a little white with it so you could see pretty much the, the 
cast of the temperature of, of the colors. But also it's something you could do if you were trying to mix greens in the distance. You could take each of those and mix a white with or a gray. Yeah. So that's it on that. So simple, right? Everyone, it's just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, I'm gonna stop this and I want to share one more thing. So <clears throat> again, this is the, I'm trying, I don't know why this thing's in the way. <laughs> there, <laughs> then you can kind of see it. Uh, so does anyone have any questions on any of this or shall we, is this all clear what I was doing? Yeah. I know. It, and the question is why, why would you bother with this? Well, because, I think temperature is an important part of uh, color mixing. And I think uh, often in painting, people pay more attention to value and they don't pay attention to, to temperature. And temperature really makes a difference. Um, it, you can mix all the white you want with something and it still won't look sunny. It, you have to have the right temperature. So do you pay attention to each area of the painting to have a little bit different color from the others. Do you block it out yeah. like that? Yeah, I mean, then I would take that string that I was sharing with you and I uh, mix from it. Like I I used the, I, I taped this, I taped a painting, but Randy and I decided it, it's, it just was too much. Um, I can show you where I would in paintings. I'll give you an example later in paintings where I've used the darks and where I've balanced the warm against the cool and that type of thing. So you'll actually see how I've used these, this, the various mixtures in this string to paint. But that's what I do when I start. And you could do it uh, with different variations on green too. Like for the light green, you could use cadmium yellow and, and that would be a whole different warmth. Um, Do you wanna show your theory now? And talk yeah, so let me show you uh, why, why bother doing this, I guess, is the, is the question. I think the reason I do it is because Ultimately, it makes mixing colors and matching colors much simpler than, than just doing one particular isolated color at a time. So now what I'll share, and this I've shared before with people is, um, let me see here. Mm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna close this out. I think the reason I, because I have so much up here. <clears throat> so in thinking about color, most people or many people, uh, many artists say that color has three characteristics, hue, value, and chroma. Uh, chroma mean is um, how bright or dull it is, how saturated it is. And they combine temperature right into hue which means that red-orange is a different hue than orange. I think it's easier to consider color in terms of a simpler fashion and say there are six basic hues and then have temperature be a component of each of those six basic hues. So if you do that, you're only worried about mixing from these six colors. You have the primaries and you have the secondaries. You know, red, yellow, blue, orange, purple, green. So those are the hues that we work with. Then the next thing uh, you can consider is the value of the hue. So when you're mixing a color, let's say you decide green, I, I'm, I'm gonna be having a green field. Um, 
you can either consider the value or the temperature next. Let's just for the purposes of discussion, because we typically I would do the value first, but because I just showed you how to mix those strings up and the emphasis was on temperature, let's talk about temperature. The, so you look at the green field and you say, what temperature is that green? And temperature of a color is how warm or cool it is. Now, we have warm colors and cool colors. This is a little confusing, but you know, red's a warm color, blue is a cool color. And that all seems obvious to people. The problem starts when people say, well, that's a cool blue versus a warm blue. When you're painting, I think you have to think about the temperature that you're, the, that you're looking for and the temperature of the colors. It's totally isolated to that single painting that you're working on. That's the whole world. All of the other paintings you've worked on, everything around you, none of that matters. The temperature is relative and it's only relative to what's on your painting surface. So for example, uh, that's why we could mix a warm green and a cool green because they were relative to each other. But I could take one of those greens like the cool green and do something even cooler and then that cool green would become my warmer green. So it's relative, it's all relative, but that's why we have a warm and a cool primary. And I said my warm primary was, cer primary blue was cerulean. Um, am I confusing everybody? What do you think? Speak up, everybody's quiet. Hi. No, that's good. I think it's okay. making sense. Yeah, does it make any sense to you about this temperature issue? Yes. So, Okay, so so rather than say I, I'm, oh, look at that apple, it's kind of red orange. I would say, look at that apple, it's red, but it's, it's kind of warm red, kind of tending to orange, but I'm still only dealing with one hue. So I, what can I do to warm that red up? I can add yellow to it, I can add orange to it, I could add a warmer red to it. It, it opens up all kinds of possibilities when you're mixing. So back to this, we, when you're mixing, you say, what hue is it? What hue do I wanna start with? What's the temperature? Let's say next we go to value. Uh, the value of a color is how light or dark it is. And you'll hear people tossing around things like, oh, it was a number five blue and you know that's a seven and, that's because we use a scale from one to 10. Some people use one to nine uh, to rate how light or dark a color is. And uh, that's that's what that's all about. I I think if you just, th I, can, I don't know if white is a, is a one or a 10. <laughs> I think it changes depending <laughs> on who we're talking to. But, but the light, the most important thing is to know how light is the color relative to everything else around it. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, it's relative. Uh, and it is nice to be able to match the colors to a number scale and there are ways to do that. So that's basically the value. And people talk a lot about getting your values correct and it's very important. But if you're mixing, for example, a light green for your field, if you put white in it, it'll cool it off because white always cools colors off. So then you have to make it warmer. And that's why temperature becomes important again. You have to go back to temperature. What can I do to make that cool green warmer? Well, I add yellow to it or red or orange. Or maybe I start with something like that little pile that I had that was my light warm green. And then I modify it lighter and warmer. I go from that to the color I want for the field. So that's why I mix the strings. And then the final part of color to think about when you're mixing is chroma. And chroma is really, uh, it's saturation, it's intensity. I think chroma is a technical term and that's how bright or dull a color is. Uh, and for our purposes for painting, uh, you, 
the purest colors come right out of the tube. And anytime you add other colors to it, typically it decreases the intensity or the chroma of it. Uh, if you add white to it, it really will decrease the chroma and black will or the uh, complement. So those, uh, yeah. I was reading Peggy that a lot of people use black to darken that color mm -hmm. just in chroma. And so does that not change temperature or does that if you use black? So does that keep it more consistent temperature wise that one color you're dealing with? I think it depends on the black because the blacks all have a temperature. They do. Um, and it depends on, you know, theory in the abstract like this is easy to talk about. The real issue becomes when you get a tube of paint, it's a pigment. And right. every pigment acts different. Every kind of pigment acts different. And even different brands of the same pigment will act differently. So um, I, I wish I could answer that. I, what is the one? Chromatic black is the one people yeah. are saying doesn't change things. I well, don't I know. I haven't used it. I think it's kind of a cool black, actually. Is it? I think so. To my eye, it is. Okay. I, I, um, most people I know use ivory black, but I don't know. Ivory is supposed to be warm, but I think that it's cool. It's transparent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't use black, so. Yeah. That's what I was gonna, I mix my own black and I do it different ways. Is that what you do, Peggy? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, just to wrap up this this part so we can start actually looking at some paintings and asking questions so we can explore this a little further. Let me just run over the how this all comes together and is applied. Um, so I think Randy, you asked, well, where do you start? What what green do you start? How do you pick the green? Well, you can copy what you see, but you don't have to. You can plan it out as a, uh, you know, just a process. You could say, I'm going to have a complementary color scheme, and this green is going to work best with this. And if you're not truly a representational painter, you can do that. Um, I, all I would say is the first color you pick, everything else has to relate to it. So... Mm -hmm. You can plan your color scheme very much the same way you'd plan your lights and darks. You know, you don't want equal amounts of warms and cools, probably. Of course, everything's just a recommendation. It's not a rule, but um, that's how I would start. So I, I wanted to throw this one question in. I don't know if it'll, you don't have to answer. Okay. But no, like high, high chroma, um, where everything is compressed towards the lighter values. In yeah. those, right, if you paint high key, I mean. You don't mean high chroma, you mean high key. High key. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Does that yeah. lend itself to a cooler painting? No. No? I don't, I think you make that decision. Okay. I mean, if you're just mixing white with the colors, it'll probably be inherently cooler because white in the pigments, white pulls everything off. I mean, I think so. Right. If you wanted it to be warmer, you'd have to you'd have to play around with how to make each of those high key vet colors warmer as well as lighter. Right. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Peggy, yeah. I have one question. Um, you, okay. You use the string you just showed us for your, for mixing greens, but do you right. apply, do you apply the string to other uh, colors as well, like to blues or or warm colors? Yes. Okay. I do, particularly like for example, we have adobes here. <clears throat> so if I'm painting an adobe house, mm -hmm. I'll mix a whole string of different. Uh, colors up that would work for the adobe. I'll mix a warm and a cool dark and a warm and a cool light. Mm -hmm. um, 
And sometimes I'm not quite as systematic about it, but yes, I do that because that way I can see the relationship of all those colors right on my palette before I put it on my painting. Right. And I think I would think it would give you um, more of a harmony in your colors to work that uh, way when you, when you start with the string and then you mix out of the string, you you keep a harmony color wise. Yeah. Yes, I think it's easier to keep a harmony. Yeah. You have harmony. And I think it's like when you're out there and you're working fast, if you took the time in front to mix those colors and, you know, the light's going to change so quickly. Kind of nice to be able to have some pre prepared colors and kind of have a system, right? Because you have an hour and a half, really, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, I think one reason I don't mix the colors, I don't mix them totally thoroughly, <laughs> typically. Mm. They're, they're just kind of thrown together and there'll be some pure, like in the light warm green, there would be some pure ochre and some pure sap green in it, uh, mixed in with everything else. It's, I like to mix on the canvas as well. So I like that vitality of not totally mixing the colors up. Um, I guess you could still do that and pre-mix them and put them in a tube. So I can't, by the way, I can't see anybody. So oh. if, if you have questions, just pipe up because I'm looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can't tell if anybody laughed or <laughs> anyway. It's hard. Zoom can be really. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess I just want to cover these other maybe four things. Uh, we talked about the fact that color is relative to the rest of the color in the painting. And, and it doesn't matter what you did yesterday or the day before on a different painting, unless you're trying to match it. You just have to pay attention to what's in front of you. Uh, so is is that clear to everyone because people struggle with that <laughs> is it clear that a so, war the only thing i'm asking you know because i tend to use compliments a lot to mm -hmm. warm or pull that painting down so with the greens you're kind of outside of that whole concept right you're using mixes that are each individual they're not like going towards the redder green i don't know if that well you know the the transparent oxide red is red so that's the warm green maybe i'm not answering your question or well, not standing uh, like i'm like sometimes i'll do like a purpley reddish lay down that first and lay the green on it yeah you think about that when you're painting to have some of that compliment um, to try uh, to get vibration or? Yes, I do that. Um, I often, when I'm painting, I'll do a very light runny wash of the compliment over the whole canvas, but it's transparent. It's really just like a watercolor wash. And do you use one color to do that, Peggy? Yes, and I love orange, so that's usually what I use, particularly with green. So you'll put a whole painting, I'll lay down all the value, you know, try to get the drawing done in orange. Uh, yeah, but the wash is really light. It's, if you think of the way you do an initial watercolor wash, that's how I tone my canvas. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, and if I were painting red rocks, I might think about using uh, blue or green under there. Right. You know, that's that. That's what you're talking about, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Sparkle. Yeah. yeah. And you just don't go right into those colors that you mix. You're giving some thought to th that system of vibration putting. Yes. Yeah, I am. All right. uh, so obviously while you're painting, when you are mixing your colors, you want to compare one color to the next. Uh, and what I do is mix a color up that I think is right for what I'm looking for. Like maybe it's the side of a barn and I 
and I've got a shady side and a warm side. So I might mix both of those up and kind of some variation on those. And then if, and then lo and behold, I don't have something or I want to add another uh, bit of a temperature to it. I would test it on mm. the painting because when you mix on your palette still sometimes won't look the same on a painting. So you always compare it to what it's next to uh, because it changes color when when you do that sometimes. Uh, it's really important when you're mixing paint to understand the pigments you're working with. And I would say, I think it's important to you stick with the same pigments for a while and explore the, what they can do. And even stay with the same brand. If you're using, for example, like Rembrandt Cad Yellow Medium, stick with that for a while unless you just hate it so that you begin to understand how that pigment's gonna react with all your other paints. And then once you, once you can predict that, then it's okay to begin to play around. But if you're struggling with mixing and getting the right color, don't keep changing your pigments or even the brands. Because for example, everybody's sap green is a little different. So uh, you're just making it hard on yourself if you, if you switch around. So I have this little thing I ask myself, and there are really four questions, but I've boiled it down to three. The one I've gotten rid of is what hue is it? When you start mixing something, it's usually got a hue cast to it, even grays. It'll be a, a cool bluish gray or a greenish gray. or So you, you, you know what hue family you're gonna try to mix in. You pick that out first, but then as you're mixing it, you ask, as you're mixing, you say, is it light enough? Is it dark enough? Is it warm enough? Is it cool enough? Is it bright enough? Is it dull enough? Mm -hmm. And if a color isn't working, just keep asking yourself those questions and you'll see why it's not working, I think. And um, Peggy, to get green in the distance, which goes to gray, um do you have a do you have a side color you'll mix it with or um like a lavender or do you just try to neutralize it just with um the complement well i have um i mean in the atmosphere everything gets cooler and it gets lighter as it goes away so Typically, I've mixed up a sky color. I might use that in, you know, those strings I mixed up and I showed you how I mix white with it. Yeah. You could use a gray with that, with each of those string colors. I use those colors and I mix them with a lighter color, like a gray or a light blue. Um, okay. That's how I do it. Do you want to show some of the images? We have 15 sure. minutes. And I think the images really talk to what you're. OK. <clears throat> so let's see here. Oh, I want to show both of these. I didn't open each of these images up, but let's see here. Bear with me. Can you see me? Because I can't see you. Yeah, it's we can see. You. I can see you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's weird. It's so weird. Um, In the right hand corner, you might see the uh, view with. Yeah. Oops, if you click that and go to gallery, you should be able to see us. Yeah. Or you can go to the. Well, uh, I can see you all now. You know what was happening is my Photoshop was when I share is covering you up. Wow. So let's see, I can you see these two images at all? Not yet, right? Oh, you haven't not, shared not yet. Right, okay. Oh, here. Well, see, this is where I lose you. <laughs> oh. Okay. 
Can you see them now? Yes. yes. See a bunch of images, yeah. A whole string of them or just yeah. two? Uh, we can see whole the string. string. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Uh, how about, this is the one I want to share. Hmm. I see what I have to do. I have to open each of these up. Oh, pretty. Uh, well, I wanted to show you both of these side by side, and I'm. Hmm. You might have to flip back and forth. Okay. Okay, here's. Uh... Sorry about that, you all. I thought I had this down. I want to share. Well, let's just start. Let's start with this one. Let's see, I'll go down here to my share screen. Hang on. Share my screen. Let's do this one first. Um, I'm gonna close that. Mm. Love this. Am I here mm -hmm. with you still? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Okay. So can you see this one? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I this is plein air, this is a plein air study. And um I have another one that's the same plein air study. I don't know why this isn't working. You know what? I know what's wrong. I have to wait a second here. Hang on. Randy asked me if I had all these open and I didn't. And this is being recorded for all history to see my incompetence. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? <laughs> it's not, you're not incompetent. That's it. <laughs> not at all. This Zoom is always tricky. Okay, so. Ah. Okay, did this work? Yes. Yes. Okay, it's because. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Ah. Yeah. So what I wanted to show you are, these are both done in plein air wow. at ex exactly the same spot on a hike to Williams Lake at different times of the day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think you can see mm -hmm. the different casts of green. So, for example, I would use this. For example, um, This one over here is um, I have so many windows here. <laughs> That's really hard. Um, <clears throat> this one has this would have come out of this part would have come out. I would have laid this section in and this tree with this, this dark green, um, now see they're all doing it. That would, and, and you can see, I think that for example, this dark green here is much warmer. Can you see over there on the left? Mm -hmm. The variation, and I'm sampling now this dark green in the middle. See how it's cooler, I think, than on the mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Here it is warmer. It's darker because mm -hmm. it's 
getting closer to you. This will be amazing. See how light that is? And then this sampling here in the middle, this hill. Oh, you can't quite see it, but it's warmer actually than that. See that? Yes. So all of those greens that I used on that all relate to each other because they came out of that string where I mixed the uh, mm -hmm. dark warm. Here mm -hmm. it is. Here's a warmer part of that. See that? I sampled down here. Uh -huh. Can you see where I'm sampling? See how warm that is? And Peggy, I feel like you put sap green into almost every one of those strings. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it would. Well, because it's a green tree painting. I don't know if that hill in the back had sap green in it, but it probably did. You know, this light hill back mm -hmm. here, this this hill. Mm -hmm. yeah. This, I don't know if... Uh, I, I think that might have had a little bit of green in it. Looks like it. Yeah. But I think it helps it to all relate, though. I was just realizing that you had put sap green as a common denominator, and then you moved it with the second color to the warm or the cool. Right. So, so they it, all relate so beautifully. Here it is. The, the one that was the other time of day. Let's get this one smaller. This one probably shows it better. Um, so this is the other time of day with, with different light. And this would have been some of the lighter, warmer, Like I'm sampling, can you see this right here? How much warmer it is in mm -hmm. some spots? Yeah. So you get a variety and it's not obvious, but because you start with those strings, helpful. Down here close, it's much cooler. These greens down at the bottom, these, uh, these light greens, mm -hmm. Those are the cool light greens. Remember, I mixed a cool light. Yeah. Yes. With the cerulean, right? And sap. Right. Exactly. There's probably more ultramarine in this. Should I go on and show you some other ones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see here. Um, oh, this is a good one because it has a lot of green green in it. Mm -hmm. So I might have mixed two strings of green in this. Um, I might have mixed, and you know, it's hard. This is a plein air painting also. Um, this, these greens in the back, we're definitely done with that green string. So you can see over here, it, sometimes I transition a, a green, I'll sample this cool dark green, see how much cooler and darker it is. Mm -hmm. So you get a nice transition and you get variety. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, I think that this green in the front might have been a whole different string. This um, this keeps changing on me. I keep. I think all of this would have been done. All of this down here. Mm -hmm. This might have been uh, the dark, and then I mixed it to this light up above. So you, you can use that string system and start differently. I would have used cad yellow with this, mm. maybe even cad lemon, and there's some purple in it. I probably had either mixed the purple or had it on the palette. And there's a lot of white. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you get top plane. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. The color. Yeah, this is that typical. I recognize it. It's a sap green. Um, and this is sap green too. It's just, but you don't have to use sap green. You can use um, literally any tube green. Yeah, as long the I like to the the good part about starting out with the same green every time mm. is you know how it acts, mm -hmm. and then you just if you have to mix your green if every time you go out you have to mix your green and let's say you use ultramarine and cadmium well you have to be sure you get the same amount of ultramarine and cadmium in it every time to have the same green to get the same predictable mm -hmm. right. mixture so, so the only the only um thing that you you know kind of uh work toward is to have a transparent green so it has to be transparent when you're doing your string? Because it's, yeah, well, the darks have, to, I like the darks to be transparent. Uh, the lights don't have to be transparent. Right, but I mean, the green, the tube green that you're, that you start with for all of the yes. dark, medium and light in, in your string, um, those all start as transpa a transparent green mixed with. Exactly. And the real reason for that is because the darks work better for me if they're transparent. It's a yeah. taste issue partly too, but I want the darks to be very transparent so that they show, I'm trying to get up close on this. It's not a great image. Mm. But, um, so uh, in uh, here, you can kind of see this part in here. Mm -hmm. particularly right there that's a real transparent dark green and then this these greens over here are opaque right mm -hmm. right and they i don't know why but they seem to to, to come forward and the dark seem to recede better if they're transparent for to my eye yeah they do part of that you know, part of that is, listen, this is all taste, you know, it's uh, it, in the front, these greens, you can see down here, this would have been done. Um, this ground would have down here mm -hmm. been laid in with the lighter greens that I mixed because I knew that the greens going over it would be even lighter and warmer. Mm. So it's layered. Right, and the raw sienna is transparent, whereas yellow ochre is opaque. Right. Uh, this will be interesting to see. So this is dark, kind of blue, how cool it is. It's hard to... Sometimes it's not as obvious as I think it is. So it, you ask about how to make the trees go distant. So these trees in the back here, yeah. these, mm -hmm. those in theory should be further back so they're cooler. I probably mix, I think I mixed a lot of blue with them. See how cool they are? Mm. You can see that maybe they're yeah. still mm -hmm. dark but they're considerably cooler yeah. and then yeah. the lights are much lighter so that and makes them recede does anybody have any questions about any of this or, or is it all i th um you've actually it's eight o'clock oh so Let me stop here well I do have a question, Peggy. You're gonna oh. you're gonna start a, a group soon in August. It it's actually starting the first week of September. Because it's listed as August in really is it September? Yes. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, we changed it uh, just because of scheduling and uh, everybody. It, Randy and I both had schedules that were kind of crazy, so. 
Okay. It's actually going to start the first week of September. And Wednesdays? Yes, the first Wednesday of every month. And um, will do do you plan in your um, lessons to to do demos to um, you know how I'm just curious if anybody else is interested um, to know what you know how you plan to structure your your classes. Uh, well, I, there will be demos. I think uh, what happens in the class will be determined by what people are looking for. What what kind of uh, um, I can yeah. answer that in, in that um, we have a mentor meeting once a month, and then yeah. in the month you meet with your navigator and everybody talks about what they're doing. You get a homework assignment each month. I'm, I'm in a class now, so I, I, I know oh. the, that part. I was just wondering for Peggy, um, oh. at, at her philosophy or her uh, way that she um, that you want to structure the classes, Peggy. That's what I was basically asking. I will do demos, yes. Um, we have an hour of that, of time that can be devoted to that. So uh, let's say we were talking about green. I in the In the workshop or in the mentor program, I would show you how I'm going to mix how I'm going to use those that string that I mixed up, how I'm actually going to paint with that. Mm -hmm. So there'll be demos in that fashion. There'll be assignments uh, based on what you're interested in. I hope it will flow easily. Um, and then there'll be critiques. Mm -hmm. And also, I think I'd like to use other people's work to explain certain aspects of things that I'm thinking. So it'll be varied that way. But yes, there will be demos. Yeah. Thank you. you know, and if people are interested in, let's say brushwork, for example, uh, we can come up with some exercises that will help people with their brushwork. We'll look at various kinds of brushwork, talk about how it happens. I can show you how different brushes mm -hmm. do things, that kind of thing, that kind of demo, I think. Is that Great. what you wanted to know? Yeah, yeah. I just kind of, you know, um, wondered how you would want to approach. Right. Yeah. Thanks. I think Peggy is so um, agreeable to whatever we need. Like even just coming up with this, Vivian, she mm -hmm. she could do any part of it, and then we had to decide. But she's always a willing party to do whatever anybody asks, you know. That's great. So yeah. One thing, one thing that we haven't discussed, and I, I don't know how it works actually in the mentorship program, but sometimes there's reference material that helps people. You know, they actually need the reference material. It's not enough to look at it. And I I would presume, but Randy, you would know better than me that that reference material can be sent to people in the mentorship. So they actually have hard copies of things. Um, well, we put it in the library or okay. you can put it in the feed. All right. People can print it out or access it. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so it's very easy for you to upload to the library reference materials. Yeah. Okay. And people can- So there will be that also. Yeah. Yeah. So and are you all numb? Are you numb from the <laughs> from the theory? No, not yeah. at all. And I have to say, Vivian and everyone, she had a lot of other pictures that we didn't get to that showed so many different variations of greens and blues within paintings. So, um, I think the real key. I think, Randy, the real key is that by using, by mixing a warm and a cool of a light and a dark of each of the colors you want to use, you then have a palette in front of you that you can choose from and modify as you're painting. And you're not stopping every time you need a different color. It's all laid out there in front of you. So that's really the way I approach it. It's like crayons. Right, a little bit right. where you have different values and that 
every color. It's better to mix it ahead, I find, yeah. Well, and then the other thing, and I know I don't want to run long, but the other thing is that in mixing color, it can become very confusing. You can kind of get lost in the process. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a set process of those three questions that you ask yourself, it always brings you back to what you have in front of you. And you look at it and think, is it working on the painting? And if it isn't, why isn't it? And then you ask yourself those questions about it, the lightness, the temperature, and the chroma. So that's the real key to this, I think. I think you're offering everybody a system, right? That they can yes. start. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is nice. are, you, are you also open? I mean, I know that you do lots and lots of uh, plein air work. But um, for those of us who may not get out to paint outside uh, all the time, what about um, students who work from photographs or um, even, you know, do things other than landscape like um, still life or interior, that kind of thing? Are, are you open to that? Oh, sure. And in fact, I think I've painted outside twice this summer. So <laughs> I'm... <laughs> <laughs> we can, because I haven't had time I want to get out but no so we can talk about how to look at photographs and adapt them so so you're not just copying the photograph and uh, right. I'm not I'm not terrifically versed I don't paint a lot of still life but I think it, it it's it's all part of the same right painting uh, from life yeah, yeah exactly exactly oh so yes all right great sounds good Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Peggy, amazing. Oh, thank you, Randy. So much information, really. I yes. mean, to take this away, and I was able to take notes while you're talking and, okay, good. and apply and try it out. Great. Okay. Well, sure. you know, I'm, I'm open to uh, anybody uh, getting in touch with me. If you've got questions, just email me. I think it's on my website. Uh, or maybe they give you a contact through Masterius also, I think. Yeah. Um, Do they? You know I'm what? Sure. I don't, if you're not in the group, maybe not, but you're on Instagram. No. And mm -hmm. so everybody yeah. can message you on Instagram. Right yeah, now. just do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks thank so much. you so much. Okay. Oh, thank you, you guys. Have a nice dinner. Peggy, thanks, Randy. <laughs> thank you too. Nice, nice to meet you, everybody. <laughs> see you soon, guys. Bye bye. Okay. Yeah, bye. Yeah, see you soon. You. <laughs> bye. bye, Chris. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye. You bye iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. and I, I know Karen was here, but she signed out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. 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 bye.